I'm joined right now by PPD. It is uh, just a day before, or two days before the finals here at TI, uh, where you can potentially win again. That's pretty exciting, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Exciting. Well, anyway, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about things that aren't just about this event, but more about what's going on in the whole ecosystem, because I know that you tend to look at things much broader than I think a lot of players do in esports. This is what I've been led to believe by other people like Kelby May, who's just off camera. Yeah, sure. I have my my ideas and my theories, and I guess about a lot of things in esports. Well, let's talk a little bit about you know how you perceive Dota um, and sort of where it's at within the, the industry. Obviously, we have CS:GO and League. Do you sort of feel that Dota is the best representation of of the epitome of success in, in esports in terms of ecosystems? Oh, uh, I think there's a lot of way in ways Dota fails, and like Dota isn't as successful, I guess, in other things, but I think it is the best eSport, okay. honestly. I think that, like, the great thing about CSGO is that it's very easy to understand. Like, it's point and shoot. It's, you know, terrorists versus counter-terrorists, and a lot of the general public who's not familiar with the game can identify with that, and it can understand what's going on. And League and Dota are very similar, but I think that Dota has, like, so much more history and so much more, so much more, like, meta and development. And I, I don't know too much about leagues, and I'm obviously very biased, but... I'm a, I'm a big fan of what's going on in Dota, and there's lots of drama, and I'm sure there is in League. I don't know. It's, it's hard. For, yeah, it's hard for me to compare League and Dota too much because I don't know very much about League. But um, from what I've seen in Dota, it's just growing and growing, and people are all about it. Well, every year TI pops up. There's always a ton of conversation about the prize pool, about the fact that so much of the Dota ecosystem is around the central tournament. Uh, do you think that that is good, or do you look at either the major system that we see in CSGO where it's more broken out across these different events or the league system that we see in league and, you know, wish that you had something like that? Well, we're pretty fortunate for Dota. There's, there's tons and tons of money being pumped into the prize pools of our tournaments, not, not just the international. You know, we have three majors this year with a $3 million prize pool and countless other events hosting $200,000, $300,000 tournaments. And I think we had a tournament in Russia that was like five hundred dollars or 600000 So... For that, we're like super fortunate, and um, it definitely rewards the teams that win. Uh, most definitely, like last year, you know, winning international, we won over a million dollars each, and that, that's hard to say for any other esport out there. Um, of course, like branding and things like that are important, but they're very much less important in Dota. Um, even though you have like big names and famous players, uh, but their, their teams aren't really a part of them, except for like your, your exceptions are like Navi and Dendi, and I think that. Myself, Fear, and Universe have kind of been developing some brand over at EG. But um, at the end of the day, Dota is like all about prize pool. So the only thing that matters is winning. And for that reason, and that reason alone, it's incredibly cutthroat. So there's, um, it, can be, it can be stressful and hard at times. People will turn on each other, stab each other in the back, and do whatever they think is best for themselves. They, so a lot of people will look at that and say, you know, it's not as stable as you see in a League of Legends or in a CSGO. That might not be good for it. But who's to say it's bad? Um, a lot of people make their traditional sports comparisons about, like, what live television should be like and what um, an e like a sport or an eSport should be like. And I'm not exactly sure that you can't change everything. So, um, you know, we talk about people, like, even, like, broadcast production, like, you know, our broadcasters aren't the same as what you see on ESPN, but is that bad or is that good? And some say, like, oh, it's unprofessional, but who's to say that people don't like unprofessional? Gabe Newell, I think, is an example of someone who says that they don't want unprofessional as a broadcaster, right? Yeah, of course. Like, you don't want, I mean, you still want people to be professional, but I think things can be different. They don't have to be, not everything has to be the same. You can, just because we're at a point in current, like, broadcasting that we think this is the way it is doesn't mean there isn't something new on the horizon. With the knowledge that you have of League of Legends and the knowledge that you have of CSGO, sort of focusing these as the, the other big esports, are there things that you think those scenes could, be, could benefit from, you know, if, if they look at League, or Dota? Well, I think the coolest thing about Dota is that we are very crowdfunded, and Valve likes to share that with us, as, do, as does um, CS through sticker sales. And as far as I'm concerned, like, it's been like, I think that's the big joke, right? League has, like, the smallest prize pools. Yeah, they're the biggest game with they're making the most money. And I mean, Valve, Valve makes their money too, but it's still, um, it's kind of strange. So uh, maybe some more crowdfunding or like some community projects. It's like when, when the community raises the prize pool $20 million, 
everyone gets excited sure. about their contributions, about their game, and they like to go brag to their friends who don't play Dota, and they're like, oh, you should come play this game. Like, I, a lot of cool things that Valve does for this game. So what happens the first year that the prize pool is only 15 million, and they can't raise and set the new record, right? Because a lot of people point to that and say like, well, this is great now, but at some point in time it starts to decrease, that's gonna be a huge issue, because it can't just keep going up and up and up and up and up. Um, I think you might, if, if you actually think that's true, I think you might underestimate Valve and what they're capable of doing. I think that they as a company are smart enough to make sure that that prize pool doesn't decrease and I, I don't want to be like all conspiracy theory, but like if the prize pool was, you know, $5 million short, you know, who's to say they're not just changing numbers and putting another $5 million of their own? Gabe, Gabe could buy a significant amount of compendiums. He can do whatever he yeah, wants. Yeah. He's made billions of dollars. You know, no one's going to tell him what to do. Sure. Uh, looking at CSGO and League, are there any things that you would like to have in Dota that those teams have? Um, I, I personally do enjoy branding. I think that it's very, um, I, I, could, I do it with my YouTube channel. I like to be active on social media when I can. So I don't want to get too much blowback. And I think branding is cool and an exciting thing. It kind of promotes the notoriety of players and their teams. And Dota is, like I said before, is not very much like that. People, you know, players don't stream. Players don't interact with their community because, um, you know, you could have great stream viewers and make, you know, a hundred grand. But, or you could go to the international and get eighth place and make 180 grand. So it's like, you know, you sacrifice your time to do more streaming and more things for the community, or you focus on your own self interest and your team self interest. And that balance is not very um, balanced, I guess. I mean, speaking very candidly, we, you know, as opposed to a League of Legends event, a CSGO event, or whatever, as our media team goes there to cover it, we find that at TI in particular, and you know, at some of the other events, I've heard this as well from a press standpoint, it's really hard to get interviews with any of the players, you know? And for us, we're trying to put a spotlight on you guys. Do you think that that's ever gonna change? I mean, I know you were willing to sit down with us, thankfully, but do you think that we're ever gonna see a, a world where the, other, the rest of the players start to realize that there might be value in, in stuff like this? As I see things now, um, until players become more aware and the importance of branding becomes more important in Dota, I, I don't think so. I think that I just don't. I just don't see the reason, and it. It, it doesn't add up. Do you think that there's anything in the future that will do that? Because I know you said it's all about the price pool. Winning is everything. As long as that continues to be the case, I think you know potentially we'll have this issue. I think a lot of things can be done through example. I think that if players see another team or another group of players really excelling with branding and making it a very lucrative or like profitable thing for them, or something really good for them, like. If a, like one team just becomes super famous because they're really good at branding, then another team is going to copy them, or you know they're going to want to do the same things. Like if you always want what the other, someone else has, right? So that's kind of the way I see it. Until somebody's got to set the example. Anything setting aside even CS:GO and League, sort of to finalize this out. Anything that you would really like to see Dota to change, either in the game or as an esport or anything at all. They changed it, so there's only two majors next year before TI. I really like that. I felt really busy this year. Uh, they're trying to mess with roster locks, trying to create some form of stability or structure at least. Uh, if I could change anything, I would probably want them to stop making the game more complex. I would like the game to be easy to, easier to learn, whether that's working harder on tutorials or just some way to teach and describe this game to people that have no idea what's going on. But that, I mean, that sounds like that noob game, League of Legends, that people go to play that's so simple, right? Yeah, and that's the great, that's the great thing about League of Legends is that it's, it is much easier to pick up and uh, the learning curve is much lower from what I've heard. And I mean, that, that's good. And, you know, I, I don't see anything bad about that. Maybe the game's a little more simpler and maybe, um, you know, maybe because Dota is so complex, we have these levels of competition. I'm not sure, but I mean, that, that would be, without, Dumbing down the game, I would still like to be, still like for it to be easier for teams to pick up. If you ever want to learn League of Legends, I have a friend named Peter. It's also named Peter who could yeah. potentially teach you. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I think I'm, you know, I'm getting pretty old now for an esports player, so I think I'm pretty committed to Dota at okay. this point. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Is there anything that you would like to say to any of the, the EG fans out there? Uh, EG fans have been. Um, I know, I know they've always been there, even though the past like couple couple months has been a little darker than they're used to seeing. 
uh, in the past couple of years, but out here at TI, everyone's been super supportive, um, and it's been overwhelming, and the crowds are super loud, and it's really, really awesome. Well, by the time uh, this gets released, people will already know what happened, so best of luck. Yeah, uh, you know, we're guaranteed top three, which is an amazing result. I Coming into this event, I had, I'm not sure what my expectations were, but I think we're all um, very happy with how we've done, and we're just going to continue to do our best and see how far it takes us. Very good. Well, thank you so much for the interview. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things esports here at Yahoo Esports.